Coming to you live from the home of this podcast, the Black Goat 39 Studios, this is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Now here's your host, the Guru of Sports. Coming to you live from the Black Goat 39 Studios, this is a special edition of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Now, there is, now, there is, Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. Welcome to episode 80. Yes, episode 80 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports. Well, you know, some things are meant to be, and then some things are not meant to be. Now, I have a story for you before we get into the program, the podcast. I actually was waiting up, and I'm, I was waiting and waiting and waiting because I wanted to see this game between Michigan State and Nebraska. Now, Michigan State won the game. I won. I basically, I, I was rooting for Michigan State to win the game, but guess what? They didn't cover the spread. So that means that Michigan State now is the only team probably I'm I'm I got had one more pick because I was I picked uh U, USC and USC is playing right now. I'm sitting up here watching the game. So Michigan State was the only one out of all the teams that I picked today to win and Michigan State did not cover the spread. So that means that there goes my College ticket for the day, and let me tell you who I had. I had Maryland winning by 14. They won by by 14. Duke won really big. They won by 19. Uh, Arkansas, I did pick them, and they won straight out, so I didn't have to worry. Arkansas was a five-point dog, and I took them. So that's how it goes. You know, you win some, you lose some. Better luck tomorrow because I got five on tomorrow, and I definitely, definitely is going to try to score on that one and win that one. Uh, I'll have the picks a little bit later, but welcome to episode 80 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports, and I'm sitting up here right now in my black Las Vegas Raiders Yes, my Las Vegas Raiders are really, really good. They've been doing good, and they made me proud. And I I tell you, I'm really, really happy that they are doing good. And I'm, you know, hey, on one end of the spectrum, I'm glad they're doing good. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, here's Jacksonville. They're stinking it up again. And, um, you know, they're having problems down in Jacksonville. Still, the uh, the thing of Urban Meyer leaving is still a big topic, and we don't know if he's going to leave or not, but, you know, hey, whatever happens, happens with Jacksonville. I just hope that they can get that thing turned around. You know, 2017 was, what, four years ago? And they're still, you know, floundering around now, and um, Trevor Lawrence is, you know, losses. Oh, man, Trevor Lawrence looks like he's not even – I don't know. If it, it it seems like when you have to worry about someone else's job and then you're not being able to do your job, that makes a big difference. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into uh, the college rap. College rap is something I do every week, and it's just basically a little bit of a rundown of what's going on. And um, I told you that Michigan State won. I told you Maryland won. I told you Duke won. Um, 
Also, Wisconsin was uh, ranked, and they got beat by, well, another ranked team, Notre Dame. They beat them pretty handily, which wasn't a problem because I knew that uh, Notre Dame was going to take care of their business and do what they were supposed to do. So I'm not worried about Notre Dame. Notre Dame's a great team, and I like them, and they won. All right, like I said, Arkansas. Arkansas beat up on Texas A&M. And tell you the truth, it wasn't even close because I watched that game and they look really, really good. Arkansas is for real. I got to give it to them. They are for real. Um, Another team that uh, got upset today, which is, uh, you know, kind of made me happy. And because, you know, my, my Buckeyes won. They won really big. They were really, you know, blowing them out. And I think that game is still going on. Um. Arkansas had at least uh, at least 50, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Ohio State had at least 52 points in that game, and I know that the last time they took out all their players, and, you know, you know what, what can you say? Ohio State is going to be there, so I'm not worried about Ohio State. That's my thing. I'm not worried about Ohio State at all because, you know, they had to fix their defense, and their defense still didn't look Really, really good at the beginning, but you know what? They're going to be okay. I'm not worried about them. All right, other Maryland. Maryland is four and zero right now, and like I mentioned before, they beat Kent State very, very good. Now, here's some scores that I, you know. Like I said, I'm not really. I don't really do the scores, but I'll tell you. You know who won and who you know who lost. Pitt scored 77 points today. I think that was the high. They beat New Hampshire 77 to 7. Yes. 77 points to 7. That's right. That's, you know, they, they, they uh, that was, that was tremendous. 77 points is probably the highest I've seen this, this season. Other than that, Georgia won 62 nothing over Vandy. Coastal Carolina is really, really good. And I really like these guys. I, was flipping through all these games this afternoon, and I didn't get a chance to watch a little bit of Coastal Carolina, but I knew they was going to win anyway. They're really good. They're I think they're like 17th or 18th in the country right now. Uh, Iowa State got upset by Baylor, which is, you know, Baylor's pretty good, but Iowa State was the favorite. Actually, between Iowa State and Oklahoma, they're basically the two best teams in the Big 12. And like I said, once Oklahoma Jets uh, to the uh, SEC, him, them in Texas, Texas put a beat down on uh, Texas Tech today. I forget the score, but I knew that they won. Alabama won, which is, you know, not a big deal. Oh, let me finish this statement about Clemson. Clemson, uh, Dabo Sweeney was talking a lot of crap, a lot of shit last year about Ohio State. Uh, this year, Ohio State might make it. There's an outside chance that they could still try to make it. But, uh, you guys are probably going to drop down to, like, in the 20s or so. I hope you drop down to the 20s. Because you know what? This is what you get. This is what you deserve. And remember, oh, I said that word again. Now, let me explain to you guys the word deserve. I usually hate the word deserve. There's only two, one thing in this world you deserve, and that's an ass kicking. This is exactly what Clemson got today. They got an ass kicking. They deserved it, and believe me, everything else to me is you earn stuff. You earn stuff in life. You earn your, you earn your way through life and everything, and that's basically it. You earn stuff. You don't deserve nothing but an ass kicking, and you know, like I said before. Philadelphia Eagle fans, I'm not picking on you guys, but, you know, I used to hear a lot of people tell me, oh, we deserve a championship. No, you deserve your ass kicked, honestly. And for years, you got your ass kicked. But I don't remember, uh, I cannot remember 2017 that well. Uh, they say you guys won a championship. Uh, I got to I gotta go back and look at that, look at that and 
find out. You know the guru is always joking with you guys, Philadelphia. You know I love you, Philadelphia. I sit not too far from you, and uh, I have to hear all the uh, all the people talk about how great Philadelphia the Eagles are. But I'm going to talk about them a little bit later. But that's my point of view on the word deserve. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of stuff because I got five segments to do. And then I got to give out shout outs. I got a really, really special shout out. And I'm going to, I'm going to give out later on. Uh, I got in touch with one of my hip hop brothers. And I got the approval. And see, this is one of the things I usually do. What I do is I ask permission for things. I have the permission to play his video or his uh, his brand new cut that he made yesterday. I talked to him yesterday. He gave me the approval to play it on the podcast. I'm going to try to get him on as a guest picker. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is getting guest pickers. I'm going to carry the show for myself the rest of the way, rest of the football season. I can carry it by myself, but I want guest pickers. I think I've reached out to a couple people out there, and I want you guys to know that you got contact me, Zoom me, we'll get in touch, we'll do this thing. You can come on, pick against the guru, but I'm going to tell you right now, the guru's always right. You know, last week I went, all, you know, I had all my picks right, and you know how it is. That's the way the guru rolls. He rolls because... The guru knows all. He knows all. Well, he didn't know that Michigan State was going to lose, you know, lose that bet. But, you know, that was that's here nor there. But, you know, <laughs> I joke around a lot. But anyway, I appreciate it. You know, I'm, I was really fired up because uh, I actually did travel yesterday. I was up in upstate New York and um, actually I was supposed to be home Early because uh, I'm, you know, uh, celebrating with my mom. Her, her, mom, my mom's birthday was last Monday, and I wasn't able to do any celebrating until today, which is Saturday. This is Saturday night. I'm back to Saturday Night Lives, and anyway, I was supposed to be here to celebrate with my mom, but I got up a little bit late and pushed back everything. So this is why, actually, this is the podcast on. It's really, really late. It's almost midnight here. But anyway, let's get to uh, the next segment, and which is called He's a Bad Man. And you know who I'm going to play? The late, great, my man, Muhammad Ali. I must be the greatest. I told the world. I talk to God every day. And God's with me. Can't nobody be against me. I shut up the world. I'm the greatest. 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 I'm the you told me when you visited in Los Angeles, you could do it in eight. Well, you thought Sonny and figured Sonny was great. How come you did it in six or seven? You did it in seven. I had him going in eight. I was getting ready to take him in the eighth, as you can see. But the man stopped it just to keep from making me look so great. I say, now, give us that poetry on number seven. He wanted to go to heaven, so I took him in seven. You took him in seven. Oh, I'm the king of the world. Hold it, hold it, hold I'm it. I'm pretty. Hold it, you're not that pretty. I'm a bad man. I took up the world. Anyway, <laughs> every time I listen to that clip, it's really funny to me. Um, if you didn't know, I meant to meant to say this. Um, Ken Burns. Ken Burns is probably one of the best document documentary uh, artists. He can put on a documentary about anything, including baseball, jazz, uh, Jack Johnson. He just made a documentary, a four-part documentary on Muhammad Ali, and I think that was one of the greatest. It's really sad because, you know, I already know how it ended with Muhammad Ali uh, passing on, leaving this world with uh, Parkinson's and everything, but... You know, Ken Burns really is great at his job. He does a really, really good job of putting together some really, really good documentaries. I think I've watched at least uh, four or five of them. And like I said, the ones that I mentioned, I did watch. Um, 
Muhammad Ali's one came on last Sunday, and I think it lasted last, I like Tuesday or Wednesday or so. But uh, I did get a chance to watch it, and it's really, really good. Okay. Now, the bad man of the week is Mike Edwards of Tampa Bay. Safety for Tampa Bay. Do you know, I have never heard of this. I've never, I don't even think this is possible. But he had two pick sixes in that game against, uh, I think it was Atlanta last week. And he was, I mean, I couldn't believe it. And I think the pick sixes took place within like maybe, I have to say at least five minutes apart. At least five minutes, game time apart. It might have been sooner, but the thing about it is that I knew that that's the first time I ever heard of somebody having two picks, two pick sixes in one game. So Mike Edwards, he gets the bad man of the week and the victory cigar. I got to give it to him. Big props to him. He did his thing. Now, the poo-poo of the week goes to Miami. No other than Miami. How can you get shut out 35 to nothing and you're one of the better teams in that division, behind Buffalo, and maybe now behind New England, because New England looked like they're starting to pick up their, their you know, pick up things. Matt Jones is pretty good, really good. I think he's going to be rookie of the year. You know, I, I'm a Jacksonville fan, and I know that Trevor Lawrence was the hype and everything like that, but Trevor Lawrence is basically, I don't think he's on a great team. Uh, Jacksonville is not a good team or a great team right now, but it seems like New England is probably going to, you know, form theirself into a really, really good team. New England looked like they're going to turn the quarter, and believe me, I think that Belichick is going to do a great job. Uh, I mean, you know, he always does a great job, like every time, but, you know, this is something new to him, because last season, you know, he had to watch Brady go off, and, um, go over to Tampa Bay and win a Super Bowl, and he had the the nightmare season, which I think that he doesn't want to have this year. Believe me, he went out there and got spent money, and that was the first time we ever seen New England go out there and spend money in free agency and bring in all these new players. They never do it. They never do it because they always build from the draft, and then they use players, they cut players, they get rid of players. You know, and, you know, Tom Brady left. So, you see what happened. So, Poo Poo of the Week this week goes to Miami's Dolphins. And, like I said, I'm going to have to find a sound clip for them and, um, you know, let you know. But, anyway. Now, Fantasy Pickup of the Week is probably going to be Chubba Hubbard. Chubba Hubbard. I know, that sounds like a bubblegum. Chubba Hubbard. Uh, Chubba Hubbard <laughs> bubblegum, right? All right, Chubba Hubbard is going to be probably the biggest pickup because in the Thursday night game, you see that we lost Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey went down in an, on an injury. I'm not sure how long he's going to be out, but the Panthers won that game. And, you know, pretty much the Panthers' defense is probably one of the biggest, uh, you know, biggest mysteries of the young season right now they're pretty good they're really good um they actually are in the top five the top five player five of you know fantasy pickups now i did pick up cordell patterson cordell patterson was one of the uh, guys that are you know really hot the last couple of weeks the first two weeks of the season and um i got a chance to pick him up and i was surprised the Cardinals' defense is still out there in ESPN leagues. That's usually the one I usually play in. And they look pretty good. I, I picked them up because I know they're going to you know, crush Jacksonville. And also another player from uh, uh, the Cardinals is uh, Rondell Moore. He's probably, last week he went off. He really, really looked good. So we're looking at the Panthers' D, Rondell Moore, Chubba Hubbard, Cardinals D and Cordell Patterson is the big pickups for this week. And if, and probably Chubba Hubbard is going to be number one next week. But we got to see what happens tomorrow. We got to see what happens in these games tomorrow. So 
if you're out there, you're fantasy wise, you know, turn to me. I usually have uh, fantasy tips for you every week, the pickup of the week. And that's one of the segments that I do. Okay. Now, without further ado, we have to play the music. And I love playing this music because it's time for the picks of the week. And come on, music. Cody, play the music. The music. When you hear that, the autumn wind. That's beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Ah, yes, the autumn wind. Ah, what's up with that, Cody? All right. The autumn wind is a raider. I like my Raiders. I love my Raiders. But anyway, I... When you hear this... Again. All right. When you hear this music, that means that it's time for the picks of the week. All right, Goaty. Play. Stop it. Okay. Thank you, Goaty. Appreciate you. You're good for nothing, really. I don't know why I keep you around here because, you know, I I don't know. Goaty, you're a trip. Okay. Before I go into the picks of the week, I want to give you the phone number that you can call me. Call me directly. 302-468-7239, 302-468-7239, 302-468-7239, that is the guru's phone number, it's the hotline for me, if you want to talk to me, uh, leave me a message, send me a text or whatever, you can do that on my hotline, all right, now let's go to the picks of the week, picks of the week are brought to you by the guru, and take these picks, and I'm going to give you you know, spread numbers and everything, and I'm going to tell you who's going to win this week. And like I said, last week I did pretty good. The Guru went perfect, uh, you know, 14, 15, and 0. You know, I should have I should have played that uh, this week on the uh, ticket that they have down there in the uh, at the store I usually go to to play my, push my bets in. Um, if they have like a $5 ticket that you can win a hundred thousand dollars, uh, I'm going to probably try it next weekend, but it seems like every time I try to go down there, it is one place I usually go to. Um, the guy always try to card me all the time and I really don't like that because you know, I'm like this. Hey, look, you know me, I come in here all the time. I buy, you know, beer and stuff like that. And you still want to card me. So what's up with that? You know, I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, I want to get to the picks of the week. I got to run these down because, like I said, I got a lot of shout outs. I want to give, uh, I, I, plus, I want to give uh, my special guests a little bit, or my special guest that I talk to, a little bit of time to play uh, his music as well. That's a surprise that I have for you. Anyway, Buffalo is a seven point favorite over Washington. Uh, Washington, I like them, but. I think Buffalo has made a point last week when they shut out Miami. I'm going to take Buffalo. Okay. Chicago versus Cleveland. Um, We know Andy Dalton is not going to play. We know that uh, Justin Fields is going to get the start. But I still think that, you know, I got got, um, my man Nick Chubb on one of my fantasy teams, and I know that he's going to probably run over that defense. And they're not that bad. Well, Chicago's defense is okay, but I really like Cleveland in this game. Cleveland, give me seven points. I'll take Cleveland. They'll win by seven. Okay, Baltimore is a seven-and-a-half point favorite. They're going up to Ford Field. Um, Baltimore did surprise me by beating Kansas City last week, which I did tell you that they was going to do. You know, you like I said, if you listen to Guru all the time, I'll tell you what's the deal. And, you know, if you would have listened to me last week, I had Kansas City. No, I didn't. I had Baltimore. I had Baltimore. Yeah, I, Guru don't remember anything. Okay. But Baltimore is a seven and a half point favorite. I think they will win the game outright, and I will take Baltimore. Okay. Tennessee is a five and a half po- point favorite at home versus Indy. They're having the, uh, the uh, Oilers reunion and... I don't think that they're going to... Carson Wentz is going to start. It doesn't matter. Carson Wentz is trash to me. I, I, I've i never, never, you know... I always thought that he was uh, injury prone. 
and it seems as though that he is, and he's going to come back and start, and he's going to probably leave this game again. So, anyway, Tennessee, I'm taking them. they five-and-a-half point favorites, okay? Kansas City is a seven-point favorite over the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Kansas City, after that loss last week, I think they're going to bounce back. And uh, I do like the Chargers. Uh, Chargers is one of my teams that I write about. I write for Cali Sports News, and I'll tell you about that a little later. But um, I'm going to take the Chargers and give me the seven points. I think they'll keep stay with them. They will stay with them. I think that the Kansas City Chiefs will win the game, but I'm, I wanted them to cover. I definitely want the Chargers to cover. Okay. New England is a three-point favorite over New Orleans. New Orleans, we don't know what t- type of team they are. Um, and they're going into Foxborough. Foxborough is a very, very hard place to play. I'm going to take New England and the three points. Okay. Here, here's two teams that are, uh, let's say, uh, terrible. And um, New York Giants is two-and-a-half-point favorites over uh, Atlanta. Okay, I like the Giants, but I don't know. They might not. I don't know. It's This is going to be a really, really interesting game. Like I told you before, I picked up Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson is going to be running all over that Giants defense. But I think that the Giants might win this game, so I'm going to take the Giants and take the two and a half points. Okay. Pittsburgh is a three-point favorite over Cincinnati. Um, Pittsburgh is pretty tough. Uh, they got, you know, beat up and then they won. I don't know. I think I'll give me Pittsburgh in the three points. I like Cincinnati. I like Joe Burrow. I hope he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions because I do have him starting on one of my fantasy teams. So I'm going to take Pittsburgh in the three points. Arizona is the eight point favorite over Jacksonville. Uh, there's no question there. I'm going to take Arizona. I know I like Jacksonville, but. Can't trust them. Can't trust them right about now. And like I said, the uh, uncertainty of uh, the coaches, staff, with you know them arguing all the time and all that, and Trevor Lawrence kind of getting shell shocked. Has he hasn't lost three straight games in a row? So it might be the first time though. All right, Denver is a ten and a half point favorite over the Jets. I think that Denver will win this game. And eh, ten and a half points is a lot. I usually don't bet. What I usually do when I bet, I usually look for a low number. I don't usually look for something like, you know, if in the case of uh, what Pittsburgh beat New Hampshire, I don't even think that that uh, that play was on the board. Uh, seventy-seven to seven is a lot of points. You know, who's to say somebody's going to beat somebody by seventy points? Okay, um, my Raiders again. I'm going to take my Raiders. They're three and a half point favorites over Miami. Miami got beat up last week, and like I said, they got the poo-poo of the week. I like the Raiders at home, and believe me, their Raider defense is a lot better than everybody thinks. You know, I got to give it up. John Gruden finally, finally is going to do something, hopefully now in his, what, third or fourth year here in Las Vegas, and hopefully that they can win that game. I think the big game of the week is probably Tampa Bay and... Los Angeles, uh, Tampa Bay is going into Los Angeles, so far field, to play the uh, Rams. I never bet against Tom Brady. I got him going in one of my fantasy teams as well. I'm going to take Tom Brady in the one point that they're favored by. Seattle is a two-point favorite over Minnesota. Minnesota, eh, I don't know about them. They got lucky last week when they beat Arizona. I really like Seattle. I think, like I told you before, I think Seattle's going to win that division. And big props to my friend out in uh, Seattle land, Miss Adriana. I'm going with Seattle. I ha- I like Seattle, and I'm going to keep rolling with them. Last week when they lost that game, you know, it was it was shocking. But believe me, I'm, go- I'm not going to bet against Seattle ever again this season. It depends on who they're playing, though. All right. San Francisco and Green Bay. San Francisco is a three-point favorite, but I'm taking Green Bay. Green Bay seemed like they were clicking last week. Give me the three points, and I'm going to take them. Now, the big game. 
the big game of the season because Philadelphia is going to play Dallas. And I think it's going to be in Dallas. Uh, I might be able to watch a little bit of that game. I got to I gotta travel out on Monday. So I'm going to definitely take the uh, three and a half points and take Dallas. They will win. Philadelphia really didn't look that good last week. San Francisco, uh, you know, San Francisco is a good team. Now they have another good team. Dallas is probably going to win that division, and I hope that they do, because then we will have put it into all this stuff about how, you know, Dallas should be in there, you know, every season. These are the two teams that I hear the most that say that they're going to win the Super Bowl, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. Every single year, I hear that they, either one of these two teams are going to win the Super Bowl, and they usually don't. Dallas haven't won in 25 years. Philadelphia haven't won in four years, which I don't even really remember. I got to go back and look at the tape and see if they did win the Super Bowl. I, I don't remember them winning the Super Bowl. But anyway, you know, Philadelphia fans, I love you guys. You know I'm just joking with you, okay? Don't take it offensively. Don't, don't be really uptight about this, okay? Now, like I said, that's it for me. I have uh, all my picks in. Like I said before, I'm taking Buffalo, Cleveland, Baltimore, Tennessee, uh, the Chargers, the, the cover, you know, I think the Chargers will hang in with Kansas City. Taking New England in the three points, uh, the Giants in the two and a half points, Pittsburgh in the three points, Arizona the eight points. Yeah, they're going to probably smoke down. Um, Dallas three, I'm taking Green Bay. Give me the three points and give me Green Bay. Seattle take the two points. They should win big time. Tampa Bay, give me the one point. I'm going to take them. It's going to be a tough game, though. The Rams are pretty tough. Uh, Vegas, I love them. Three and a half, give me them. And Denver, ten and a half. That's a really, really big number. Um, the biggest number, I say, when you get to 20s and 30s, like in college, I usually don't even touch those. All right. Now, I want to say thank you. This is, this is it. This show's uh, podcast is almost over. I want to make sure that you guys get all my information. Like I said, you can follow me on YouTube. I'm at The Guru of Sports Show. I have my own show. I don't know when I'm going to do it again. I might not do it again. I like kind of doing the podcast now because I can sit here. I can talk to you. And, you know, I, I do kind of, you know, know that you guys kind of miss my, you know, very, very, you know, very, very good looking face. I have a face for radio, which the old joke or whatever it is. But anyway, Facebook, um, actually I might be going off Facebook for a month. Um, October is a really, really, uh, scary, kind of, kind of up and down month for me. And I think I might take some time off of Facebook, but, um, I'm at the Guru's daily shorts at, uh, on Facebook, and I'm Al Briscoe. IG, I'm at the Guru OS 39 and my kids are Guru's Kids, D-A-E, Daisy, Alex, and Ellie. Uh, Daisy, rest in peace. Alex and Ellie are my two little kids, doggies that live here with me. I love them very much. I miss them very much every time I travel, and they miss me, and they usually run up to me, give me a kiss, and then they'll Go about their business because they're individuals. All right. My Gmail is uh, groovesdailyshorts at gmail.com. Twitter, I'm on at go 39 on Twitter. Uh, Goaty, where is you at? He's in the background over there. Goaty, how you been? All right. You know you, know, you, know you don't have to tighten up on the uh, work around here on the boards because you know I'm by myself now. Anyway, he's at blackgoat 39 on Twitter. Follow us on all the podcasts, pod, uh, excuse me, podcast outlets. That's the brain going before the mouth again. I usually do that sometimes. Okay, I'm on Spreaker. Spreaker is the main vessel that we come out of. And uh, we're on Spotify, Podchasers, Pod Addicts, uh, iTunes, uh, you know, all the big ones, uh, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts at. Got to give a shout out to my man, Damien Adams. Got to give a shout out to my my friend, Miss Mary Mack. She has a really good podcast on grief. 
And I think probably in October, I will be connecting with her a little bit more because like I explained to you guys before, October is a very, very bad month for me. And I need to, you know, kind of lay off Facebook for a little bit. Anyway, Jeff Duarte, uh, my main man, he might be coming in here next week. I don't know. We got to talk again. But I really appreciate talking to you, Jeff. Thank you for everything. Like I said, I will be back. I'm going to I'm going to have to try to get something done this week, definitely this week for the uh Cali Sports News. That's who I write for and I I've been there 5 or almost 6 years now. 6 years, yeah. Uh 2015. Yeah, 6 years. I've been there 6 years. And and one of the best crew best group of people I've ever had the chance to work with. Um other than the people that I'm currently working for where I travel, you know, I love them and they, they kind of love me. So, um, give it up for the crew. Caden Guru, Vin, uh, my executive producer, Vinny V, my technical advisor, Ray Guru, my musical director, Dante Guru, my backup co-host and my man, Derek B. He'll be back sometime and we appreciate you. I got to give it up for my hip hop brothers, Danny Revere, Jeff Shepard, Happy the Original Pioneer, Reggie Reg, Positive K, and my man, Cool Kyle Starchild. I might have him coming on one day, and um, i definitely like to get pick his brain about some sports. Me and him, we, we, we're, uh, we're good friends, but the thing about it with Kyle is that I'm not sure what team he roots for. So I got to figure out what he, who he roots for. And then I'll have him come in here, and then we'll pick games and all like that. But like I said, Kyle, I haven't talked to him in a while. But I did talk to King Charlie Prince. And if you guys don't know who King Charlie Prince is, I think he's the original inventor of The Roof is on Fire. Now, that is pretty good. If you remember, if you know hip-hop or anything like that, which I do, do know a little bit about. Because, like I said, years and years ago, I used to listen to all the stuff that came from New York. And I usually try to get a hand on everything. Every single rap that came out of New York. Hip-hop, rap, everything. Like I said, King Charlie Prince is one of the original guys. And when you get to, like, King Charlie Prince, Cool Kyle Starchild, and Danny Rivera, and all these guys, they are originals. I don't try to, you know... I like I like rap now, but like I, I mentioned, I, I'm not really big on the uh, new stuff. And uh, my man Cool C has a, a show that he always say, uh, none of that new new crap, new shit. I don't want to hear that new shit. But anyway, I got to give props to him. I'm going to play a song in a minute. My model is... Uh, my motto in saying is, this has been a Black Goat production for Black Goat Entertainment. Copyright 2021, all rights reserved. Our motto is, we don't steal from no one. We always appreciate and we never hate. Believe me, don't hate anybody. Try to shake it, shake your brother's hand or give him a high five or whatever. I got to give a shout out to my man, Kevin Ryder. My, my best friend, Kate. She always keeps me straight when I'm at the gate. <laughs> uh made a rap. Okay. My well, man Rick in Buffalo, big shouts to you. Bella B is a friend of me. She lives up in the YYC. Gotta give a shout out to you. Jeff is Southland. Alberta Girl 34. She's up in the YYC as well. I appreciate you. Um my man Dan the man. Dixieland Dan the man. Always cool and got a cigar in his hand. Cigar and a drink in his hand. I got a little bit of rap for you. My man Rob in the 312. Uh, I know it ain't the 302. I'm in the 302. But anyway, Rob, appreciate you. Glad to talk to you this this uh, this week. My, my friend, like I said, Adriana, she's up there in Seattle land. She's a 12 fan. And I got to give it up because because she you know she's a good she's a good person. I really appreciate I really appreciate the DA Illuminati's originals. Uh, they took me into the group, and I feel like I'm at home, and I really appreciate them. Okay, I got to get out of here, but I want to play this 
uh, rap by my man, King Charlie Prince. He gave me the approval. I appreciate it. I'm definitely going to reach out to you again, and I'm definitely going to have you come in. We're going to Zoom together, and we're going to basically, uh, you know, I'm going to have you come in and pick some games. Now, I want to give you big props also for the um, for the uh, interview that you did on the uh, with Jeff, uh, Jeff Shepard project that you did with Cool Kyle Sarchild. That was a pretty good uh, piece. And I really, I, I had to ask myself, wait a minute, I know... I know him. I know him. I don't know him personally, but I know his rap. And I know, you know, he was, uh, he's a good brother. And I got to give it up to you. Big props to you. All right, let me get out of here so I can play this. And you guys, hey, I'll see you next week for episode 81. This is the guru signing out of here. But listen to my man, King Charlie Prince. Have a great one. Enjoy your football Sunday. You guys take care. I'll see you later. On every finger, face up on your chest, Rolex on your wrist while you're cruising up in your Lex. You blew up overnight, you call yourself Big Wooly. You're hanging on the avenue, count the chatter night, smoking fillies. You're silly, you just made yourself a target, bragging about the skins that you hit. While brothers are starving, you're gassed up and talking about day your peace. But brothers know you sleep, cause they've been watching you for weeks on how you play them out and said you're gonna put them down. So they hung around and all you could do was give them was a pound. You knew they had skills, cause they auditioned in your face. What you fear, kid, that you're gonna be replaced you got a little money made a name for yourself when others need help you're afraid to share the wealth so this is how it is okay i know you fake you call yourself a real brother give me a break you got a little money made a name for yourself when others need help you're afraid to share the wealth so this is how it is okay i know you fake you call yourself oh, a real brother give me a break you want to be the only star up in the hood but yo it's all good because you ain't doing what you should before you got your punk ass on and got a deal it used to be a time when you used to keep it real. Now you're switching up. Better yet, you change your faces. This and all your peeps. Cause now you're going places. You're starstruck. They say you gas in the head. They even want you dead. Because they feel they've been misled. You quote Uma D saying how you like me now. Conceited, flamboyant, you're suit and proud. I overheard them talking about the whole setup. They fed up. Naming brothers that they gonna wet up. You got a little money, made a name for yourself. When others need help, you're afraid to share the wealth. So this is how it is. Oh. Okay, I know you fake, you call yourself a real brother, give me a break, you got a little money, made a name for yourself, when others need help, you afraid to share the wealth, so this is how it is, okay, I know you fake, you call yourself a real brother, give me a break, cats be starving like Marvin, and that ain't right, when brothers get up tight, then they want to start a fight, you went platinum, cool, that sold a lot, not because of your skills and your hot, cause you're not, record labels are pimping you, and getting all the dough, the only way you getting money, is from a show, your songs downloaded for free from any apps, even YouTube. Cause no one's buying your crap. You getting radio play? Fine, they getting paid. That's the real reason why your record's being played. Sold your soul to the devil for a couple of mills by making sacrifices. Now who you gotta kill? You got a little money, made a name for yourself. When others need help, you afraid to share the wealth. So this is how it is? Okay, I know you fake. You call yourself a real brother? Give me a break. You got a little money, made a name for yourself. When others need help, you afraid to share the wealth, so this is how it is, okay, I know you're fake, you call yourself a real brother, give me a break. Big props to you, my man, appreciate you, you call yourself a real brother.